कौन सा लेता है Yes, we are light. Good afternoon, one and all. We welcome all of you for this session or and talk on vertigo rehabilitation. It is a privilege that we are here to welcome our own alumni, Dr. Savni Gokhale, who is an UG alumni of Sancheti College of Physiotherapy, passed out in 2014, and she is a founder and senior therapist at Physio First Physiotherapy Clinic, which is based in Pune. She is an excellent vertigo therapist. She has her specialization done in trauma rehabilitation and also music therapist. and ma'am has done her masters in musculoskeletal sciences and manual therapy physiotherapy so we welcome you dr savni and uh, please begin the session on vertigo rehabilitation thank you ma'am uh, good afternoon everyone uh, myself dr savni gokhale a proud alumna of sancheti college of physiotherapy and now as ma'am said uh, an orthopedic and vertigo rehab specialist I want to thank our principal, Dr. Apurva Shimpi Sir, Dr. Suroshri Ma'am, and entire panel of Alumni Association of Sancheti College of Physiotherapy for giving me this opportunity. So, before starting the actual talk on vertigo and vestibular rehab, I want to tell you all how I got attracted and uh, interested in this topic. So, uh, on our first day of postings in second year of college, I remember. i had a terrible accident where i fractured my temporal bone and had uh, head and inner ear injury so dr shimpi sir and dr prasatta ma'am was there and they admitted me on the spot and my life was saved uh, but due to the head trauma i became a patient of vertigo myself i tried all the treatments allopathy homeopathy ayurveda everything but there was no effect of any treatment on the recurrent episodes of vertigo finally i was introduced to dr saloni raje ma'am uh, and she treated me with the vestibular rehabilitation therapy and touch wood i was completely cured from the attacks of vertigo so in the due course of my rehab i got extremely interested in this topic and uh, dr saloni ma'am has been my mentor since then so today talking in front of all these teachers uh, about vertigo is a very emotional moment for me and let's begin the talk so uh, let me start my screen sharing yes so uh, today's uh, topic is vertigo and vestibular rehabilitation let's take the overview of this presentation uh, first i'll talk about what is vertigo and its causes then types of vertigo and the assessment of uh, the patient by a therapist then what is vestibular rehabilitation phases of vestibular rehab some success stories uh, the recent advances in this topic and lastly some 5 uh, to 10 minutes for question and answers so what is vertigo uh, in the general sense a feeling of dizziness or spinning and fear of losing your balance is known as vertigo and it is an umbrella term so there are many types so uh, the types of vestibular disorders the main is vertigo and the other is vestibular hypofunction so as the name suggests hypofunction means Uh, any system which is not working at its peak level so vestibular system when it is not working correctly we define it as vestibular hypofunction and vertigo again has many types the first one is central which arises from cerebellum or basal ganglia and uh, the origin is from the brain the second type is peripheral vertigo which is known as bppv benign paroxysmal positional vertigo which is a very common type of vertigo and third one which is very interesting that is cervicogenic dizziness that means 
the dizziness or the sensation of spinning which comes due to some problem in the cervical spine we will know about it later in this presentation so uh, we'll talk about the first basic type that is bppv benign paroxysmal positional vertigo is the most common type of vertigo which is a false sensation of spinning you feel like the world is spinning around you benign it is non life threatening but most important thing even though it is not life threatening it affects the quality of life of the patient uh, in extreme manner then paroxysmal paroxysmal is it comes in sudden and brief spells positional it gets triggered by certain head positions or movements so in a particular position like if i turn to my right side or if i turn to my left side in the bed i get that uh, feeling of spinning that is known as positional vertigo and as i said vertigo is a false sense of rotational movement then what is vestibular hypofunction that it is reduction or loss of vestibular function which results in difficulty maintaining balance especially when walking in the dark or on uneven surfaces and a decrease in patient's ability to see clearly during head movements then cervicogenic dizziness it has been defined as a specific sensation of changed spatial orientation and disequilibrium as a consequence of proprioceptive disorder of the cervical afferent so uh, whenever you diagnose a patient cervical di cervicogenic dizziness comes as a uh, diagnosis of exclusion so first you will diagnose whether the patient is having the vertigo because of bppv or is it because of vestibular hypofunction or is it because of any central causes if all of these things are ruled then you will check the cervical spine and if that uh, spinning and dizziness is coming from the spine so it occurs with certain positions and movements of the cervical spine and can be accompanied with a stiff or painful feeling in the neck typically these patients have uh, trapezius spasm they have restricted range of motion of the neck and along with it they have that dizziness or they might have a, a chronic history of cervical spine as well so as i said it's a diagnosis of exclusion which means that other causes of dizziness have to be excluded first so what is this positional vertigo for that we need to uh, we need to learn about the anatomy of the inner ear so i know it is very uh, ignored topic in all our ug days but inner ear uh, has three semicircular canals so one is a posterior canal second is a horizontal canal and third is a anterior canal so these canals have the uh, fluid which is named as perilymph which is circulating in a circular motions in these three canals but sometimes what happens is at the end of these canals there are calcium carbonate particles or crystals which are attached but these particles get dislodged and they come in those canals and they move freely and because of those particles coming in between the circular motion of the limb perilymph that causes a false sensation that our head is moving moving and it gives you the sudden uh, attack of vertigo so you can see in the picture that there are three canals the uh, zoomed in picture the second one you can see anterior canal posterior canal and lateral canal and uh, the inside fluid is flowing in one direction and those particles or crystals they disturb this flow and give the brain some false sensations or false afferents that the head is moving at a very rapid speed but actually it is not moving so if you see a patient who is having vertigo that patient will tell you that i am moving or entire uh, room is moving but the patient is stable that's why it's a false sensation of spinning what are the causes of vertigo first one is the vestibular so any uh, any injury or any difficulty in uh, in maintaining the balance or any issues in the vestibular system uh, can cause vertigo second is head trauma any head trauma hematomas or uh, accidents they they also cause vertigo third is as i said cervicogenic then central or neurological causes many 
nervous system disorders have uh, vertigo as one of their symptoms, then cardiovascular, somatosensory, and psychological. But as a vertigo therapist, we basically uh, diagnose or we basically treat vestibular and cervicogenic kind of vertigos. Other types of vertigos are mainly treated by uh, ruling out their root cause. So if the vertigo is because of any drugs or it is because of any central nervous system problem or it is because of cardiovascular disease, then those diseases as uh, medications or other treatments are going on and those diseases get treated, this symptom also gets treated. So in our scope today, it's the vestibular and cervicogenic uh, kind of vertigo which we can treat as independent therapies. What are the symptoms? First is dizziness, second is spinning, then there is anxiety. Anxiety comes because you feel like you're losing balance and you're going to fall anywhere. So the patient, any patient of vertigo you see is very anxious and he's very concerned about someone is holding him or uh, someone is there to support. So your approach towards any vertigo patient should be very calm and very supportive. And you should tell that patient that don't worry, you're not going to fall, I'm there with you. Then uh, obviously there is balance loss, there is associated nausea, vomiting, there is headache, visual disturbances, someone can see blurry pictures and uh, tinnitus that is ringing in the ears. This is most commonly found in the patients of head traumas or inner ear injuries where the nerve is uh, damaged and it is giving that ringing sensation in your ears. So to understand vertigo and its treatment, this reflex is the most important thing, which is known as vestibulo-ocular reflex, VOR. This reflex enables clear vision through gait stabilization by coordinating eye movements with movement of the head. You all must have learned it. It functions to stabilize images on the retinas when gas is held steady on a location during head movement. So basically this reflex enables us to see a picture clearly and not in a blurry vision. So during head movement, by producing eye movements in the direction opposite to head movement, thus preserving the image on the center of the visual fields. You can see that in the picture. And this reflex is intact in normal individuals, but in vertigo, positional vertigo or vestibular hypofunction, this reflex is disturbed. So the image which is forming on the retina is also disturbed and you feel like there is some disturbance about what I'm seeing in the room or that is spinning. So the VR reflex is disturbed and that's why it gives the false sensation. So let's talk about the assessment. Assessment is the most important part. Basically what happens is uh, a patient is uh, suffering from any kind of vertigo. He goes to a physician or he goes to a neurologist. All of these doctors along with uh, other medications, they put these patients on Vertin or Stematil or Strugera. What these drugs do is they shut down the vestibular system uh, for temporary basis, like we take crocine or any painkiller, our pain is uh, reduced for that period of time. The same happens in this when you take Vertin or when you take Stematil. When you assess that patient who has taken Vertin or Stematil, you cannot find any positive findings. So the nystagmus is uh, inhibited due to the Vertin and uh, there are false negative tests. So always, always when you are going to assess a vertigo patient, make sure that he has not taken any kind of these medications last night or in the past 24 to 48 hours. Or you can tell that patient to stop these drugs and then come for an assessment so that you can uh, assess that pro uh, patient properly. In the assessment uh, 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 scenario, the first important thing is the history as we all know it. So in history, you will first ask whether you are having spinning or not. The spinning can be internal or external. That means in internal spinning, the patient feels like the entire room or uh, the him, he himself is moving, but the feeling is inside the head. Like he will say that maza doka gargartai, kiva maza doka cha atmade firlasar khavattai. That means the internal spinning is there. 
and internal spinning is not associated with benign paroxysmal positional vertigo so if patient tells that he has internal spinning and none of the external things are moving he thinks that he himself is moving and it the feeling is inside his head and the outside things or the room or the surrounding is not moving around then most probably it is not bpp it is something else so from the first question itself you can exclude whether the patient has bpp or not if he tells you that yes i have external spinning that the room is ro uh, roaming around me or the surrounding is spinning around me then definitely he might be having bpp so from the first question itself you move towards the diagnosis then secondly duration of spinning this is also most important now you know that patient okay the patient is having external spinning so he might have bpp but the duration of spinning is more than a minute that is the spinning is con constantly there for 30 minutes for an hour for 2 hours 4 hours the entire day he has that sensation of spinning that is not bpp so these kind of uh, episodes where patient is having prolonged spells of spinning are due to other causes like menias disease or any central nervous system problem so you exclude again the diagnosis but if the duration of spinning is some seconds like the patient typically tells that today morning i was turning uh, in my bed from my right side to left side and the minute i turned to my left side the uh, room started spinning around me and it stopped in 15 to 20 seconds and then i got up but in those 15 seconds the entire thing was spinning and and i was about to lose my balance classical uh, history given by a bppv patient then third you should ask the patient that if he has any recent trauma or infections uh, inner ear infections or uh, throat infections so in these uh, uh, questions you will come to know that yes that patient uh, had head trauma and that might have led to the uh, episode of vertigo or the patient had inner inner ear infection so that infection might have caused uh, the disturbance in the pressure in the inner ear and that must have caused the vertigo then you should ask the patient if he has hearing loss or ear pain or ear surgery or he has ringing in the ears all of these questions uh, tell you about the condition of the ear and whether the patient should be assessed by an ent as well to rule out the infection so that the uh, a symptom of vertigo will automatically reduce or you need to further assess then uh, hearing loss is also associated with uh, chronic vertigo patient so if the patient ha is having bppv attacks over the past 2 years 3 years it's most likely that uh, his hearing might also be affected so that also you should ask then fifth is uh, if he has done any reports that mri brain or uh, any audiometry test so that you come to know whether it is coming from the ear or whether it is coming from the brain okay so this is the basic history part uh, these questions the first two are very important uh, whether the spinning is internal or external and second whether the duration of spinning is less than a minute or more than a minute that there there itself you come to know the diagnosis at least you have that idea then uh, the pa examination part comes so examination uh, till the recent times it was done with the eyes only but now with the recent advances in the technology we have vng goggles uh, vestibular nystagmography or you call it frenzel goggles also we have this apparatus in our sancheti opd so uh, all of uh, you who are listening to this uh, presentation a uh, must go and uh, talk with dr saloni ma'am and see the equipment and see how the patients are examined with those goggles so uh, the examination part is same with or without goggles uh, but with the goggles you see the nystagmus very clearly that is the advantage and you can record the uh, nystagmus and you can see and check the patient next time with the previous references so uh, in examination first point is whether the patient has spontaneous nystagmus 
what is spontaneous nystagmus which means if the patient is sitting there is no uh, change in position he's sitting quietly and you are assessing the eye and you see uh, the nystagmus in the eye that the eyeball is moving this spontaneous nystagmus is the red flag so spontaneous nystagmus is never there in any kind of bppv or in any kind of hypofunctions so you must tell the patient to see a neurologist if he has spontaneous nystagmus to rule out the central causes then second is smooth pursuit you tell the patient to look at a pointer or any tip of the pen or your finger and you move your finger or the pen and see if the patient can follow that path in a smooth way then third is gaze holding you tell the patient to look at one side constantly and see if any nystagmus is there then there is balance all of these has different different implications but uh, the this topic itself the vertigo and vestibular rehab is very deep and it is very vast so to cover it in one hour uh, i am just focusing on the important uh, points here then fourth is balance you should always check balance of the vertigo patient you should do the rombox test you should do fukuda fukuda test is nothing but marching at one uh, point for 30 60 seconds uh, with eyes closed and see if the patient is moving away from his starting position then there is head shake ideally head shake and all of these tests should be done by a professional trained vertigo therapist uh head shake gives you the diagnosis of vestibular hypofunction so if you move the uh, head of the patient in a very fast manner for 20 seconds 25 seconds and then stop and then you see the eye in a normal individual the eye will i will come to uh, the stable position immediately so the second you stop moving the head the eye is stable in a normal individual but in patients having vertigo or in patients having hypofunctions you de- you do the head shake and you stop moving the head but the eye is still moving which is the abnormal finding so head shake is also important after the examination this first five tests then comes the point of positional testing so with the history and with the uh, other tests you have an idea that this patient might have positional vertigo then you should test him for all the positional test in the first uh, few slides you saw a picture of inner ear and in that picture there were three semicircular canals so for each canal there is a particular test which we can do and which can tell us whether that canal is affected by those calcium uh, crystals or not so for posterior canal posterior canal is the most affected canal most commonly affected canal because it is gravity dependent and uh, the particle is the it is easier for a particle to move into a posterior canal than anterior or horizontal because those are uh, not gravity dependent so for posterior canal we do the dixolpike test for horizontal canals we do a supine roll test it is done for right as well as left side so in this picture on the uh, first uh, picture you can see a dixol pike test which has been done the therapist is moving a patient's head to the uh, right side 45 degrees and making the patient lie down with his head extended beyond the bed so in this position if you can see the uh, orientation of the canal the posterior canal uh, comes in a most dependent position in uh, dixol pike and the crystals the calcium crystals which are which have come in the canal they give the uh, sensation of spinning immediately in this test so uh, when the patient is lying down with his neck extended in any one side right or left and he has nis- he develops nystagmus and he gets the spinning of uh, the spinning or he tells you that uh, i am getting vertigo in this position that means the test is positive for that side now here a uh, very important thing the nystagmus also has different types so the nystagmus that is rotation of the eyeball 
can be in the direction of affected side it can be in the opposite direction of the affected side it can be beating towards the gravity it can be beating away from the gravity so all of these are very difficult things to understand and for that you need some more time so we i am not going to concentrate on the types of nystagmus and their implication this is a simple thing to know that in this dixol pike test if the patient tells you that he is getting the spinning and you see any kind of nystagmus there that means definitely that side posterior canal is affected uh, to tell you in a simple manner uh, in the second picture uh, you can see a supine roll test which is done for horizontal canal so always you first check the posterior one because it's the most commonly affected if you if you find negative results in dixol pike right side and left side both but the patient is giving you the history of spinning and rotational uh, spinning uh, he has in the morning or any time then you go for checking horizontal canal posterior canal is negative so now you will come towards horizontal checking the horizontal canals the horizontal canals are checked by this supine roll test that is patient's uh, head is turned towards any one side first and then lying down uh, in a parallel manner in the first dixol pike we had got the neck extended beyond the bed but here the neck is in straight manner and you are just turning the side right and left and seeing if the patient is developing any spinning or you can see the nystagmus in the eyes then the horizontal canals are affected so uh, what is the treatment so we saw what was uh, uh, posterior canal what was horizontal canal anterior canal is uh, very rarely affected and it will give you uh, the positive results in dixol pike as well and in sitting position as well uh, so anterior canal you will not see that Uh, commonly these two horizontal and posterior ones are the most common ones so after this examination you took the history you examined the patient you got to know whether he has uh, bppv or he has just hypofunction the beat of hypofunction the nystagmus of hypofunction is different from the uh, bppv beat so uh, if the patient now you come to the diagnosis so Uh, after all doing all of these tests you feel like there is no bppv there is no active spinning but head shake is positive but uh, if balance is affected and patient is having constant dizziness then he must be having vestibular hypofunction hypofunction happens most commonly after any attack of vertigo so uh, to give you a comparative example if you have any kind of uh, joint injury or fracture and that fracture has been healed so there is no problem in the bone now but after that fracture is healed the uh, affected part that if you have a fracture in your uh, forearm or in the shoulder even though the fracture is healed the shoulder still pains because of the inherent weakness which has been happened due to the fracture it is the same case here so i am a patient of vertigo and i have a active bppv episode and that has been recovered now i don't have active spinning but due to the past uh, episodes of vertigo and bppv the vestibular system has been weakened after each attack and now it is not working at its peak level so i am going into vestibular hypofunction so i might i might not have active spinning or i might not feel the room is spinning around me but i always get dizziness i always have balance loss i fear that i i might fall down any time so all of these things are considered as vestibular hypofunction and that is also treatable with physiotherapy and vestibular rehabilitation therapy how we should treat that that we will see now so after the assessment you have come to a diagnosis so now what is the treatment so the diagnosis can be bppv or hypofunction and both of these if they are not there you have ruled out the central causes as well then the diagnosis of exclusion that is cervicogenic dizziness patient is having dizziness patient is having very poor posture his neck is in forward neck position 
he has history of cervical spondy, uh, spondylosis or spondylitis and the neck muscles are in spasm the rotations are restricted all of these things will give you an idea that that dizziness is coming from the spine so the uh, diagnosis of exclusion will be the cervicogenic dizziness so now these three basic types how you will treat i have uh, tried to make it in a simpler way so if uh, your diagnosis is bppv then the patient will need crp that is cannulate repositioning maneuvers followed by vrt so bppv patient comes to you you don't just reposition him and send him uh, away to his home you reposition him you take regular follow ups you see if the spinning has been completely stopped and then once it is stable he is not getting any spinning and anything you start him on vestibular rehabilitation therapy to prevent further recurrent attacks so any patient of bppv or any spinning he will need vestibular rehabilitation therapy for long run just like we give strengthening uh, protocol to all our patients after their actual injury has been treated the same role vrt also plays here so if pay, the, your diagnosis is bppv you reposition him with whatever maneuver i'll tell you and followed by vestibular rehabilitation therapy then if your uh, diagnosis is hypofunction you straight away start your vestibular rehab and if the diagnosis is cervicogenic you treat the cervical spine i know that uh, most of you know the cervical spine rehab very well and uh, you know how to treat a bad spine so you correct the posture you st stretch the tight muscles you strengthen the weak muscles and you make the patient free from cervical pain and you do the same here also in cervicogenic dizziness because if the cervical spine posture gets corrected and if he is maintaining it and if the muscles are not in spasm the uh, feeling of dizziness or the symptom of vertigo will eventually go away with the cervical spine rehab itself so if you are a good uh, orthotherapist and if you know how to uh, treat a bad spine you are good to go with cervicogenic dizziness but along with the cervical spine rehab which we all do in the opds the patient who has cervical problems plus dizziness cervicogenic dizziness then that patient will need vestibular rehabilitation therapy also so you just you don't just treat his neck you treat his neck you reduce the dizziness but you give him balance training you give him rehab for vestibular strengthening as well so don't forget to add this in your protocol if a patient of cervical spond is complaining any kind of dizziness to you so uh, as i said for bppv we do repositioning maneuvers now here also it is a very vast topic to uh, to tell you in short way but for each canal which we saw like posterior canal horizontal canal and uh, anterior canal so for each canal involvement there are different types of repositioning maneuvers uh, so for posterior canal which is most commonly affected you assess that with dissolvite test and you reposition him with epley's maneuver so the first picture you can see that the uh, patient is undergoing an epley maneuver which uh, he has been treated for his right side so right side posterior canal affected you give him right epley maneuver so what you do is make the patient first lie down in the dependent position of posterior canal that is 45 degree neck turn neck extended and sleeping on that side then you uh, maintain this position for some time then you turn the head to the opposite side then you make the patient roll down and look down you hold that position and then make the patient sit so these tests should be taught in uh, opd setup one like person to person only the picture is not very uh, sufficient to get the test right so learn it from uh, any vestibular therapist and then only uh, reproduce them on your patients so here uh, the epley maneuver is shown in the first picture and in second picture uh, brander of exercises that is habituation exercises has been uh, shown these exercises are given in chronic patients 
and who have very recurrent uh, episodes of vertigo and they must be treated at home as well like they can't come thrice or four times in a day to you so you give them these habituation exercises to do at home and they will uh, they are milder comparatively and they will eventually clear out that particle from that canal so these uh, exercises are also given and maneuvers are also there in this uh, first picture you see uh, repositioning of horizontal canal which uh, has been done with a barbecue roll test so for horizontal canal you make the patient lie down on the affected side then you uh, make the patient look up and then get get up so in this way that can the particle in that canal is cleared out Uh, you see a lampert roll maneuver also which also has been given for horizontal canal see both of them are for different things uh, there is canalithiasis and there is cupulothiasis this is a, a little bit advanced uh, thing in vertigo that whether the particle is in the canal or whether the particle is attached to the cupula uh, depending upon that the maneuver will change so a simple canalithiasis posterior canal affected you give epley maneuver but for a cupulothiasis of a posterior canal when the particle is attached to the cupula it is very difficult to remove that from that position so for cupulothiasis epley is not very effective so you use a different kind of maneuver for that so these two also for horizontal canals are different first one is for a simple canal and the second one is for a cupulothiasis so now uh, we are done with the uh, repositioning maneuvers uh, which are particular for particular canal and then the patient is free from the active spinning episode and he is quite stable so now we have to start him on vestibular rehabilitation therapy or in patients of having hypofunction you directly start with this so what is a vrt it uh, aims to improve balance it improves ability to stabilize the vision it reduces the dizziness and it prevents recurrence of acute bpp this is very important because patients after getting cleared with repositioning maneuvers drop out from the treatment protocol they don't come and they feel like they are okay but after 3 or 4 months the same patient again comes saying that i have vertigo again so in the first visit itself you need to emphasize that uh, even if you feel better after repositioning and you are not uh, having any re any uh, active episodes you should do the vestibular rehab you should do all of these exercises very regularly for next one and a half month then only you will not get this recurrent attacks of vertigo so uh, vestibular rehabilitation therapy comprises of eye movement control exercises which is uh, important to improve ability to stabilize the vision and second is balance retraining very important balance training of a patient and stretching and strengthening exercises so all of these three kind of exercises are involved in vestibular rehab just like our strengthening protocols or any um, uh, opd uh, protocols you follow for knee or for shoulder or for spine vrt is also divided into three phases so first phase second phase third phase and you should progress the patient in that manner itself you start with very mild exercises static balance uh, vision control stretching activation of muscle then in phase 2 you uh, progress further you add dynamic balance training you add gait training you add head movements uh, body movements with vision control and then in phase 3 you put the patient in the advanced training that is 360 degree turns 180 degree turns rapid change in the movement and all of these things so vrt should be administered in three phases first second and third phase so three phases of progression uh, gait stabilization exercises as i said vision control is most important because uh, we saw the vr reflex right in the previous slides so in a vestibular patient it is very important to uh, regain that normal vr reflex to make him free from any kind of blurry vision or any visual disturbances 
so gait stabilization exercises are very important and we do those with uh, keeping the eyes focused on one subject while moving our head so for example i'm looking at a object or i'm looking at a, a cross drawn on a paper my eyes are focused on that but my head is moving and i'm trying to focus my vision on that one particular point this is gait stabilization exercises you do this vertically horizontally up and down uh, in all the uh, planes so you can see it in the picture how the patient is doing the exercises there is a fixed uh, cross or fixed paper which has been put at the eye level of the patient and the patient is moving his head but the eyes are stable on the object so uh, th this is gaze stabilization exercises you do that uh, you do them first in a static way that the patient is standing at one point and then doing the exercises then second phase third phase you add body movements with gaze stabilization so that if uh, he or she is traveling or he, he or she is crossing the road while walking you need uh, rapid eye, uh, eye and head movement so for these kind of activities in daily life you need face to face three rehab as well uh, after gait stabilization exercises you give balance training balance training uh, you all know it very well we start from static to dynamic we start from firm surface to uneven surfaces we uh, add turns and twists and uh, speed is increased in the later phases of rehab eyes open eyes closed so all of these progressions you need to keep in mind while giving balance training so uh, the all of these exercises along with if a patient has cervicogenic dizziness you treat the cervical spine you stretch the muscles you strengthen them you correct the posture you give good ergonomics and all of this over a period of one and a half month in a progressive way will eventually uh, make the dizziness go away completely and it will prevent the progressive attacks of those vertigo or bpbvs as well so these are some of my like i have treated a lot of patients along with saloni ma'am or in isolation as well and patients are very thrilled when they get completely cured like this is my personal uh, experience as well which i told you so uh, when they try all other therapies when they try all other medications pathies everything has been done they have been put on vertin stemetil 16 mg for so many months and after that within one week or two week or one month they are completely cured from this quality of life affecting disorder they are very thrilled and they give you these positive kind of feedbacks so you can see in the first feedback the patient is he uh, he is telling that i i consulted a neurologist for the purpose but it was temporary uh, then i cons then he consulted me and then he went through the three phases on regular basis patient cooperation is also important here you give the exercises and tell them to do at home for one week but they don't do it then you are not going to give get the results so this is a team effort and patient should also do the exercises very regularly gait stabilization exercises need to be done thrice or four times in a day so patients patients cooperation and his patients are equally important in getting good results so now that patient is running and walking up to 2.5 kilometers a day which is a big thing for a vertigo patient to run because whenever you run whenever you go for a walk you are constantly having that feeling of dizziness so it is very important that a physiotherapist role in treating these vertigos and hypofunctions uh, the this kind of uh, uh, re reviews and replies from the patients uh, keep us motivated to do better so the other uh, picture which you are seeing that patient had come from ahmednagar for getting treated for vertigo and he had been suffering from it since past 2 to 3 years and there was no relief and in only two sessions of repositioning uh, he said that chakkar yene purna thamle ahe obviously you don't stop here you tell the patient that even if you are free from the spinning you need to go through the vrt and you need to do the exercises for a couple of months 
to treat it completely. Uh, so what are the recent advances in this topic? Uh, whatever I told you, the basics of vertigo, the canals and the repositioning maneuvers and the VRT is there only. But along with it, there are a couple of things which are coming ahead in the recent reviews and the research uh, published. So role of vitamin D, as it says in a recent randomized clinical trial, patients with BPPV were randomly allocated and their serum vitamin D was checked and they were given uh, supplements of vitamin D regularly and uh, the follow-up recurrences were checked a significant reduction in the recurrences was found in the treatment group. That is the patients which uh, had subnormal levels of vitamin D and they were given the supplements. They showed a re significant reduction in the recurrence of the vertigo. The supplementation of vitamin D and all other minerals as well, like magnesium, should be considered in patients with recurrent BPPV and subnormal serum vitamin D. The next one is Frenzel goggles or VNG apparatus, which I told you. All of the Sancheti students are very fortunate that we have these kind of recent technologies in the hospital and you can always go and see. So uh, these Frenzel goggles are extremely useful in evaluation of patients with vestibular disorders. These uh, remove visual fixation as well as they magnify and illuminate the patient eyes. So we can catch the slightest amount of nystagmus on the screen immediately. An image of the eye fills the entire screen. So if the eye is so small, but you see that on a bigger screen and uh, this allows the therapist to see very small amounts of nystagmus. So I'll show you two videos which have been recorded, recorded in the hospital itself. Just give me a second. So this is how the uh, vestibular goggles are used in the OPD. I hope you are able to see the video. So I'm doing a, a Dixol Pike test over here. Let's see another one. I hope it is visible now. You can see the nystagmus over here. You can see the uh, rotational movement of the eyeball. Let me show you the first video again because it was not visible. Someone just told me. Yes. You can see um, that the goggles, frenzel goggles are put on the patient. It is connected to the monitor and you can see the eye of the patient very clearly. 
and now i'll be demonstrating a apply uh, the dexol pike test for checking the right posterior canal so in this way the goggles are put and you can see the nystagmus on the screen let's move ahead in the presentation yes so the third recent advance is vrt guidelines and the duration so as a general guide uh, persons without significant comorbidities that affect mobility and with acute or subacute unilateral vestibular hypofunction may need once a week supervised sessions for 2 to 3 weeks but persons with chronic unilateral vestibular hypofunction need once a week sessions for 4 to 6 weeks and those with bilateral vestibular hypofunction need once a week sessions for 8 to 12 weeks in addition to supervised sessions patients are provided a daily home exercise program as well what is the take home message from this uh, presentation w what uh, basic thing i want you all to understand is this that bppvs and their recurrences along with other types of vestibular dysfunctions are fully treatable with uh, canalith repositioning maneuvers and vestibular re rehabilitation therapy administered by a vertigo therapist so uh, bppvs and these hypofunctions cervicogenic dizziness a physiotherapist can very well treat these conditions and make the patients free from these uh, disorders because all of these disorders are affecting the quality of life of these patients and you play a very important role in making that patient come back to the normal routine and have that confidence of doing all the things that he is not able to do because of vertigo physicians and neurologists should consider consider referring vertigo patients to physiotherapists for better outcomes and improvement of quality of life of these patients so if we work in a team uh, in a way that uh, the neurologist or the physician is referring his vertigo patient to a physiotherapist for long term benefit it is beneficial for the patient so these two things we all should keep in mind and those who are interested in this topic should come uh, meet me or meet any vertigo therapist you know learn all of these things and start treating patients of vertigo because this is a, a slightly uncommon and ignored topic and we are all behind treating all kinds of ortho neuro cardiovascular all of those patients which is equally important but uh, if we come to know that this is the area where a physiotherapist is playing the main and crucial role then why not uh, start practicing it but obviously you need proper training for it you need to learn all the maneuvers on uh, patients uh, and you need to practice them you need the knowledge in depth and then only you should treat the patients uh, these are the references of the uh, papers which i was giving uh, recent advances from so thank you so much for attending the talk and if you have any questions i will stop sharing my screen and we can talk so if you have any questions we have i guess 10 minutes or 5 to 7 minutes uh thank you so much dr sabni for such an amazing uh i would say personalized and very important uh, or a talk on a very important subject so uh, we have a question from r n that um, although uh, it was lovely that in the beginning you shared with us that what made you develop your interest towards this subject and because you have a personal experience associated with it but now during your private practice of uh, these years that uh, have you like is there any common pattern or is there any i would say there are two questions are there any common patterns or are there sometimes some sorts of variability you see within these common patterns in such patients who come with the complaints yes. so uh, generally uh, these acute vertigo patients are younger 
most commonly uh, the patients which have bppvs and all of those things they either have some accidental history or they have ear issues and they come to us and because they are young or they are in their mid uh, 30s or 40s the quality and the uh, daily activities are hampered like you can't even go for a walk you can't even do your normal workout and they are very frustrated because of that so frustration and anger is the most common pattern in vertigo patients because they are not feeling better with anything vertig vertin or any other tablets are just giving relief for like 8 hours 10 hours and they again have to take those tablets to feel better but it is a very frustrating thing so that is a common pattern and cervicogenic dizziness is common in elder patients like uh, menopausal women or osteoporotic or cervical issues that pattern is common in elder patients right so uh, just again asking you out of uh, curiosity and also uh, want to know the fact about uh, the awareness of this problem because if you look at over the counter drugs these days it's very common like if somebody is having a headache we'll just go and buy a dispirin or a saridon so yes. uh, what will be your message for general population about um, this particular subject that how much important is it to pick these symptoms early and get yourself diagnosed or actually checked if you have uh, vertigo and not just general migraine or headache yes i completely agree with you because the awareness is so less and people are just any type of vertigo or any kind of dizziness they are just going to physicians to any other specialist but physios like they will roam around and they will consult so many doctors but none of them will refer them to a therapist for a regularized vestibular rehab so i want to tell you uh, tell all others that if you have any kind of symptoms of dizziness or vertigo or you have any relative or friend of you who has been suffering from this since a long time please please tell him or her that you need to see a vertigo therapist first if the therapist thinks after doing the assessment that no this is something central issue or this is a red flag or it should be consulted by a neurologist then it is then it, it is okay that the therapist is referring him to the specialist ahead but the first thing you should see is a vertigo therapist if you have any spinning or any other dizziness issues true with this i think we have come to the end of it and uh, i once again thank dr sadni gokhale on behalf of the college sancheti college of physiotherapy on behalf of physio tv and the team of physio tv on behalf of uh, alumni association of sancheti college of physiotherapy thank you so much dr sadni for enlightening our audience to this wonderful and so important subject and we wish that we get to hear you more often on uh, the same subject as you grow with your experience and we would definitely love to have you again on physio tv with us once again soon thank you so much ma'am and please don't say thanks because sancheti is a family uh, for me and uh, i am a very junior in this field and i want to thank all the teachers and uh, saloni raji ma'am for mentoring me in this topic and not just treating my vertigo but uh, te teaching how to treat others vertigo as well so i'm really thankful to the entire uh, sancheti team i will just call it as family and thank you so much sure thank you so much family